talk to you today about what I'll call good Muslims. I did a recent piece, what I call the minimalist Muslim, and points out that even if all a Muslim does is to practice the five pillars, that there's some problems for the society he lives in. And I got some people who said to me, says, Bill, you're a little harsh here. I know some Muslims who are really good people. They're good Muslims. And it's true they don't know all about the doctrine, but they're good Muslims. Well, I would say to the degree that they don't know the doctrine, they're not being a good Muslim. And what we have to understand here is there's a difference between a good person and a good Muslim. Let's get this clear. A Muslim is one who submits to the doctrine of Islam, to the Quran and to the Sunnah of Muhammad. That is what a Muslim is. To the degree they practice that is the degree to which they're a Muslim. And if they don't practice Islam, then they're not being a Muslim. Instead, they're being a good Kafir, because not to practice Islam is to be a Kafir. Let me give you an example of what I mean. There's a man in America, Dr. Zudi Jasser, who is, claims to be a reformist about Islam, and those seem to be his intentions. I know several people who know Dr. Jasser, and they all say the same thing. He's a really wonderful man. He makes a great neighbor. Well, right there is a clue. If he makes a great neighbor, then he's not really much of a practicing Muslim. Why? Who's the perfect neighbor in Islam? Well, Muhammad, who's the perfect everything. He's the perfect neighbor. And what did he do? He attacked every single neighbor he had. He attacked the pagans, he attacked the Jews, he attacked the Christians. And when there weren't enough Christians in Arabia to attack, he went north into Syria to attack them. So that is the kind of neighbor that Muhammad was. And Dr. Jasser doesn't follow that. So to the degree he's a good neighbor, he's not really being a good Muslim. Now there's two kinds of ways that a Muslim can be, quote, seen as good. One is, is that they just practice Mecca the religion of Islam. But here's what this is like. It's like having a cub or a kitten or a pup. Let's say, let's take a wolf pup. When the wolf is a pup, puppy, they can be seen as cute and playful and maybe even seen as a pet. But later on, when the wolf reaches maturity, you have a different thing. You now have a threat of violence. So here we have the same in Islam. The early stages, are, can be pleasant and nice, but they're not fully a Muslim yet, because one becomes a Muslim only when you practice all of Islam. So here we have the deal. If you practice Islam, you are not going to be good for the Kafir. Why? There is no unmitigated good in Islam for the Kafir. There are some things which appear to be good, but as their Islam improves by maturing into the full Medina, then in some way they're going to be practicing jihad against our society. I don't mean they're going to harm anyone with their hands. What I mean is they're going to struggle to place Islam in the highest rank in our society so they don't have to follow our rules or they bend the rules to their needs. So there is no unmitigated good in Islam for the Kafir. What this means is, is there is no unmitigated good in a Muslim who is practicing all of Islam. All of the goodness that comes from a person, if it's not by following the early Mecca, is simply not following Islam at all. So therefore, there is no good in Islam for the Kafir, hence there is no good in a Muslim who is practicing all of Islam. It's a hard lesson because there are good people. I'm not saying that Muslims cannot be good people, but to the degree they're a good person is the degree to which they do not follow their Islam. It's a hard lesson. Thank you.